So I've had a bad day at work. My daughter is crying because I've left her to record this video. Really wasn't in the mood for this, but I promised you 30 days of FPL, so here it is. What's up guys and welcome to FPL Today. I'm your host JNO. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the continuation of how to play Fantasy Premier League here on my channel and here as part of 30 Days of FPL. This is day number 11. We're still going on strong even though my mind may not necessarily be into this video but we're still going to strive forward. We're still going to keep building this channel which I have to thank you guys so much for all of the support. I would still do this if I didn't get this kind of response but the response just helps drive me on helps me through those days where it's a little bit more difficult so thank you guys so much for the support i will keep doing this as long as i enjoy it and i cannot see that stopping so thank you guys for all the loyal support we should hopefully stream on saturday or sunday get back into the stream world i know a lot of you enjoy the streams but anyway let's go on with the video Okay, so today we are looking at team value as part of how to play Fantasy Premier League. Now, the basics we need to cover before we get into the nitty gritty of team value is the fact that FPL Fantasy Premier League is one of the few fantasy games that involves price changes in the player market. And what this means in essence is a player you buy at the beginning of the game could 10 game weeks in, 20 game weeks in, be cheaper or more expensive than they currently are when you purchase them. Now that means you can sell them on for a profit and have more money in your bank to spend on players, or you could find yourself having less money to spend and not being able to field as strong a side as everyone else in your leagues. Now the way this works is, well, it's based off a complicated algorithm that I'm not gonna get into too much because I am quite happy not to do math since I've left the educational system. Basically, it is based off of, in its simplest form, net transfers and how high they increase or how quickly they decrease. Now a net transfer big increase, which means transfers in outweigh transfers out to a significant portion, that will come in and see a price increase for that player. And then the opposite, a net transfer decrease of a significant amount will see a decrease in the price of the player in the Fantasy Premier League game. Now it used to be roughly around 10,000 for the first 0.1 of a million increase or decrease and then around 20,000 on top of that 10,000 for another minus 0.1 million decrease or increase. There's no way of definitely knowing how the system works but there are plenty of sites, one being FPL statistics, 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 that was really hard to say. Where you can join their site and see the estimated transfer increases and decreases of players. Now, of course, the simplest way of looking at this is you do not want to keep players that are decreasing in value because you're going to hurt your team value, which could affect how you play wild cards in the future or how you make transfers in the future. And naturally, by default, having a big increase in your team value gives you more wiggle room to make transfers in the future as well. Additional rules to how this works, and this might have changed. I am using stats based off of last year, so apologies if this isn't correct. If there is an injury or suspension for a player, you need a higher net transfer increase or decrease to change the price. If suspension or injury has just been removed as well, price is frozen for that game week and then will and then will be eligible for price changes the game week after price changes usually happen somewhere between 1 a.m in the morning and 4 a.m in the morning i don't know the exact time because i don't stay up that late to watch price changes and a player cannot gain or lose more than 0.3 million in a game week Another point to note with team value and how players' prices rise and fall, when you sell a player, you only get half of the increase in transfer value, and that will be rounded down. To simplify that for you, if you have a 0.4 million price increase in a player and you sell that player or transfer him out for another player, you'll get 0.2 million team value gained to spend on the new player. However, if he's raised by 0.5 million, you will still only get 0.2 million team value gain. So you have to try and sell players when they are on an even number as far as their increase in price has gone. So with all of those rules 
and all that information in mind. It is a very common strategy for top players to attempt to increase their team value by a significant amount so they have more money to play with in the second half of the season which is sometimes where you can really soar in the rankings. So your question now has to be how do you build team value? The most common way of building team value is jumping on bandwagons early in the beginning of the season. Now a bandwagon in FPL terms is a player that has done well over the weekend and has maybe done well over a couple of weekends and a lot of players are transferring that player in very quickly which will see the price of that player soar. Bandwagons of course include the likes of Mares and Vardy from two seasons ago and this season Joshua King and Etienne Kapue. All of them saw significant price rises at one point in the season and if you had jumped on that at the right time you could have significantly increased your transfer value. So at the beginning of the season it is a benefit to look for undervalued players and bring them into your side and enjoy the price rise that you see in that player building your team value to the point that you either don't need them anymore or that player has now got to the point he's so essential that unless you are playing a specific strategy like a wild card near the end of the season and trying to catch up on mini league leaders you are unlikely to be transferring that player out anyway but other teams have to pay a significant amount more to bring that player in that you got at such a cheap price examples of this in seasons past you have the likes of Michu, harry kane aaron ramsey riyad mahrez jamie vardy delhi ali and joshua king all players that started off the season very cheap and rocketed in price by the end of that season. Of course, to retain team value, you need to avoid the sinking ships, another term in FPL used quite often. Players with bad form or injury will lose value, so make sure you don't keep any player like that because they could really hurt how your season goes. And another way to affect your team value is the early wildcard. This can be used to try and gain roughly around 0.5 million in value for your team in the early international breaks. This is when the transfer market is the most volatile because you have the most amount of time for those net transfers to increase or decrease and it's when the most amount of players are actively playing. So those early international transfer windows can be a huge boost for your teams if you manage to work it out correctly which players will rise in price and which players will fall. However, it is a gamble focusing solely on raising your team value. There are players that deliberately try and get the highest team value. That is their goal for the entire season. And there's some crazy results people have got. But generally, those people don't get the best ranking. For this strategy to work, you need to transfer early in the game week. Now, there's a big risk with transferring early in the game week because the earlier you transfer in the game week, the more likely something could happen to the player you transferred in, which could affect your game week and may make you take a minus four point hit on an additional transfer. Also, transferring after press conferences, which are usually done on Friday before the game week starts, are generally safer because you get to hear what the manager has to say about the lineup he's going to play against the team he's going to play, and from that you can make more informed decisions on the transfers you make. But because you're doing that, you don't get the team value, so it's kind of a two-way thing. You can either get the team value or make the best transfer for your team ranking. However, later on in the game, taking the team value strategy may really help you in bringing in players you may not have been able to bring in initially. And that's where the payoff comes, because if near the end of the game and it's neck and neck and you have 2 million more than your rival, 3 million more than your rival, you can bring in a couple of heavy hitters that may do really well at the end of the season. Imagine last season, Alexis Sanchez and Harry Kane. Imagine you can bring those two in and your rival can only bring one of them in. You have already got an advantage on them going into that game week. And this becomes even more important if you think about the chips in play and the wild card in play. Because a lot of people will be wild carding, bench boosting and free hitting around the tail end of the season. And those chips are best used when you have the highest team value possible. Imagine a team you could maybe pick for a blank game week if you've got your team value high already. Compared to your opponent's teams that may have lower team value, they may not be able to bring as many big hitters from those few amount of games in a game week. 
Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video today and it's helped you out as far as moving on into the Fantasy Premier League 2017-2018 season. Thank you so much for the support that this channel has been getting recently. I'm probably going to say this so many times, but the growth is really good at the moment. We had a little blip on Monday when YouTube crashed, but we still got 10 plus subscribers on a day when other people seem to struggle. So thank you so much for the support. If you want to support the channel, there's plenty of links in the description down below and how you can do it, including Patreon, where you can get added to the credits roll, which you see to the side of me. And if you enjoy FPL content, consider subscribing to the channel and hit like on that video and press the notification bell so you know when videos and when I'm going live are on the channel. With all that being said and my daughter knocking on the door, I've been JNO, this has been FPL Today, and remember, it's all about the game.